Rita used to be a career woman, and she'd fly herself from location to location in her very own small aircraft. Until she went to Namibia, where she met Bobby. Well, Rita's life changed, and so did the lives of thousands of baboons. Bobby was the very first baboon I ever saw. I thought she was so amazing. And I couldn't believe that there's an animal that intelligent. And yeah, that's how we started. And then when I moved here, of course, it was Bobby and me. And Bobby had the whole bush felt for herself. And she did, oh, God, what a lot of nonsense. You have no idea. And um, the first baboon that came in eventually, she actually helped me. But I didn't really know much about how baboons handle babies and that they are inclined to be aunties and what have you. So she had a great time, you know. We had a great time. Rita, I'm listening to all the baboons on the roof of this house now. There's a lot of activity. I mean, you're living in Baboon Alley, basically. Yes. You know, I could sit here and give you a running commentary what they're saying. Now they're fighting, now they're happy, now there's this, and oh gosh, now there's a warning call. Um, you learn practically their language. Um, the wild baboons, as you know, are not that wild anymore. They just pitched up in 1992. But in those days, the people just of, you know, they shot them for fun and poisoned them for fun. And they, they practically pitched up here looking for refuge. Rita, you've developed a method that has revolutionized uh, the rehabilitation and the release of baboon troops. Yes, yes, that was very interesting because basically what I had to do is really look very closely at what baboons did. Sit back and say, yeah, I can do it because with all these babies that came, it, I mean, you didn't have to be a professor to say, well, I'll make my own troops. It was logical. <laughs> 